Last week, I discovered that you could use calligraphy as an art style to deliver very expressive images. This week, I'm going to take it one step further and see what different script styles deliver in those same images. All right, let's get into it. Our first script style is Spencerian, and it refers to an elegant style of handwriting that was developed in the mid 19th century by American his name was uh, Platt Rob Platt Rogers Spencer, and it's characterized by graceful flowing letter forms with emphasis on precise curves and loops. It creates a harmonious rhythm. Um, and is widely taught in schools and business correspondence during the late 19th and 20th centuries. Today, Spencerian script, it's Spen Spencerian script is admired for its aesthetic appeal. You may recognize it. Uh, it's, it's used in the Ford script for Ford uh, motor cars, um, and Coca-Cola is a popular um, Spencerian format. So let's take a look at this. Um, here is an example of our Spencerian script. And of course, these can vary depending on the artist or the penman, penman, I guess, penman, penman, who is creating them. So here's an example of it. And here is a woman. Uh, how cool is that? So obviously it's taken um, the woman and and it's added the loops and the the curves not only to the flourishes around her in her environment and graphically but also to her hair see how her hair kind of flows into those flourishes very cool very cool here's a cheeseburger again it's you know it's it's really creating a flourish around it but mid journey's also continuing those curves within the lettuce and the cheese and the layering of the cheeseburger and a beautiful curve of the bun, the octopus. Look at how cool that is. Um, and I like how the curves of the tentacles and everything aren't uh, consistent line weights. It's as if a pen has drawn them and it's gotten to the narrow side and then you get to the thicker side. Uh, very cool. And I mean, that is a beautiful, I, I love the way... The look of that is just phenomenal. That it, and and I love the the weight to to the tentacles uh, with the width. Oh, a house! So this one obviously has flourishes around it. Very cool in the Spencerian style, but it also incorporates it within the architecture. And um, look at the detailing around above the windows, and the roof line is actually concaved in. And, um, you know, out on that porch, you, you have a lot of curves and, and, um, even around this, this, this oval down here around this oval window, you have these curves that are pulling off of it. Very cool. Very, very interesting. Again, um, you know, has, since you have concave and convex curves in architecture, it gives that feeling of a uh, storybook, storybook architect storybook architecture very cool and the tree oh my god that is just so cool obviously you see the influences of the script on this on the on the the trunk um and how it 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 not only curves but it also revolves around the trunk just such a fantastic you know it, it's a look that that you just don't see often um and then and then you have the flourishes coming up off the ground uh what a graphical element i mean that would be just beautiful you know the uses for it be phenomenal and i imagine you know using any of these if you're doing design layout uh with text and stuff you know now you could use a spencerian font against this and I bet your layout would just be just stunning, you know, m matching your your font to your to your graphical elements. Just beautiful. All right, Spencerian script. All right, our next letter form is Unshul. And um, so this is it originated um, a very long time, primarily used in in Europe. Um, and it's characterized by rounded capital uh, letters or uh, capital letter forms. 
and lack of it has a lack of uh, consistent spacing um, between letters. Uh, uncle script was um, un unchul, not uncle. It's not your uncles. It was uh, commonly used for writing manuscripts and particularly uh, religious context such as Bibles and other sacred texts. The letters uh, have a distinct, somewhat rustic appearance with a broad strokes and simplified shapes. It's a unique style and has a uh, historical significance, uh, make it a fascinating example of early handwriting and continues to be studied and appreciated um, by scholars and calligraphers interested in ancient scripts and letter forms. So, un unshul. Here's an example of it. You know, uh, I had to find images for these examples that were Creative Common, but you get an idea. Uh, again, they may vary depending on the artists. Um, and this may not be the influence that Mid Journey is getting, but this will give you an idea of of what style family it lives in so here's a woman now look at that it's like it's like those little uh, flourishes at the end of the letters you you see um are incorporated right into her hair um i love that and that seems to be a theme with these these uh scripted uh texts and oh, so beautiful how it it flows right into her her dress stunning i mean it's what a what a piece of work the cheeseburger okay so so here little little different it the influence seems, seems to be uh, i i guess these are curly fries and then the the almost like these floating serifs for the font very very cool the octopus all right well you know the octopus is a great example for for influencing for for having a a font based influence on an image because of the long flexible tentacles i mean look at look at this this tentacle on the left goes right around and down and then it goes here but this other one comes in underneath it so it makes this beautiful s shape and you know i know what you're doing mid journey i gotcha the house oh look at this so the trees are are um you know, it's an overgrown house, which is interesting that it knows it. And it's using these little flourishes, uh, trees growing off of it. And I have seen this happen. Um, one of my houses, I, I had a tree grow out of a gutter once. I guess I got to clean my gutters more. But yeah, you can see that and you can see the curves um, within the architecture. So this would be typically a Tudor style architecture. But Tudor styles are, are very angular, where this has a very uh, yeah, curved um, flourishes within the architecture. So I think that's where the influence from, from the, the font is coming from. Very cool. Again, it's gone with a storybook feel. And, you know, this is a rustic letter form. So it all makes sense. But very cool, very unique. A <laughs> tree. Look at that. I mean, Jesus. You, you see the flourishes, you see the curves, you see um, even even these large belts, you know, you can imagine, you know, I think they, they call that bannering within um, typesetting where, uh, you know, typesets on a banner and that's built into the tree, but the tree also has these beautiful curves and what are, is that thing? What is that? Like some kind of, I don't know what that is. That is, it's like a copybara duck. I don't know. All right, there's Unshell. Unshell. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I believe I am. Unshell. All right, our next one is Gothic script, also known as Black Letter. This is a style that emerged in Western Europe during the medieval period. Gosh, it is characterized by elaborate angular letter forms with sharp pointed serifs, dense and compact compositions. Uh, Gothic script was widely used for handwriting, manuscripts, books, official documents during the Middle Ages. It's distinctively, it's distinctive aesthetic with its tall, narrow letters gives it a sense of architecture, architectural grandeur. While Gothic script fell out of common use 
with the rise of printing, the adoption of more legible scripts. So be, when we got the printing press, you know, you can imagine reading a book in a Gothic script. This would be very, the, the legibiz, legibility and, and, and it just would not be there. Your eyes would go nuts. You'd have a headache in a, in a second. It continues to be appreciated, though, uh, for its historic and artistic value. Uh, today, Gothic script is associated with medieval themes and is often used in decorative and typographic applications to evoke a sense of antiquity and medieval charm. So here's an example of it, you know, exactly what you would think from that description. Can you imagine reading a book in, in Gothic script or, or black letter? This, yeah, oh my God. Even looking at this image for too long is, is making my eyes go cross. Um, but... All right, here's a woman. Okay, so so I wouldn't it's very ornate and I see the flourishing there. I do not see the angularity of the gothic script, but I mean there are there is curvature and I guess that is it, it's it's picking up more of the detailed flourishing of the font rather than than the whole aesthetic of it. There's that word again. I'm going to use it every the burger. Look at how cool that is. I would love that burger, you know. Now you can see the angularity in the cheese, and it's it's curves that build into angularity. Uh, so I think that's what we're looking at. It looks delicious. That top patty looks a little thin, though. Um, but you can see the influence of of this letter form on on the burger, and and it's just really cool. The octopus. Look at that. You know, that's very straightforward. I would say there's. There's no real angularity in in that. Um, it's it's getting the um, serif curvature is uh, the the more detailed curvature. I think it's it's pulling on that one. Now this one is neat. This is the house, and what I find interesting is like the roof lines. They have the concaved curve, and then the archway has the convex curve, and and uh, a lot of arch. All these arch arched windows very much patterning that you would see in the capital letter forms of uh black letter and i think this is an excellent representation i i think you know th this really grabbed the essence of the font and the more i look at it the more I i'm just pulled in by the detail and you know the convex working against the concave um and there's still angularity to it with with the walls and the 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 corners and the stairs but it also fades into these beautiful curves i think that one that really got it that was that's pretty cool and the tree all right i gotta look at this one for a second this is beautiful i mean this super moody i mean that's the other thing is is not only is mid journey picking up on the letter forms but it's also picking up on the word gothic and it's going with this this dark vibe i guess is the best way to describe it and uh you know i would say those tree limbs and the roots in the bark system um even even these uh circle circles in there is really using the elaborate uh serifs that are popular in in this this font that is just very cool you know, it's interesting because I see in the background, I don't know if you can see it, but there is some angularity, some very straight parallel and perpendicular line in deeper in the fog. But the tree is so organic and, and has such curvature to it. But there you go. Gothic script. Give it a shot. Ornamental script. Okay, this one refers to the decorative and embellished style of handwriting that focuses on intricate flourishes and artistic elements. It's characterized by elaborate loops, curves, and decorative embellishments um, added to the letter forms. Ornamental script often incorporates elements of calligraphy and can be seen in formal invitations, certificates, other documents where visual aesthetics are prioritized. I said aesthetics again keep saying it. I love that word. I love it. Primary goal of ornamental script is to create a visually stunning and captivating piece of writing. Calligraphers 
and artists employ various techniques, such as shading, embellishments, creative letter forms to enhance the artistic appeal of the ornamental script. This style of script allows for individual expression and creativity, making it an exciting and engaging visual form of communication. So here's an example of it. As I say, this, this one is a wider family, so there can be a lot of influence. But the important thing to take from it is that uh, ornamental uh, script is almost creating um, art out of the letters. Um, so it can be a more uh, literal art within the letters. So uh, let's check out and, and see what, what Midjourney thinks of ornamental scripts. Again, um, here's here's a an example of it. Now look at that. That is very cool. You know, you, you have the flourishes and it knows to render it as as more of an artistic piece rather than a linear flat image. Uh, it, I, I think the interpretation here is is very cool. The way Mid Journey is jumping in there. So here's a woman as an ornamental script as her art style. Cheeseburger. Look at that. Look at the cheese. How it how it has the flourish built into it. I mean, right there, that that cheeseburger would that's cardiac arrest. I mean. My God, that's going to stop some arteries, that amount of cheese. That's not good. You're not going to poop for a week after eating all that cheese. Unless you're lactose intolerant, then let it roll. The octopus, very cool, very flourished. Interesting how the background elements are not symmetrical. The octopus is symmetrical, and I have a very different visual language on the right side than I do on the left side. But everything else is like super symmetrical. Uh, maybe uh, Mid Journey just didn't know what was going on on the left side when it was computing the right side. But you can see the intricacies, you can see the embellishments, and you can see the weight change in these tentacles, which is very cool. And it's, oh, look at that house. I mean, it's almost like paper cutout, but so intricate. And and it float like the house just flows into the flourishing and the embellishments. And it's just part of it. It's what a, that is just a beautiful piece of art. I love that. That's, you know, you would imagine these type of flourishes um, being used in this way with, the, what is it? The the initial character in 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 a paragraph for for a very important document or something, you would have these these characters built around it. But, but. Instead of using a character, it's built it around the house. It is really amazing how Mid Journey just understands these concepts. Very cool. And the tree, look at that. You would think that, again, that that the root of that tree should be, you know, some type of letter form with this decorativeness around it, um, this ornate um, embellishment and flourishes. But in, instead of having a actual letter form, it has an organic tree form and and the embellishments you know it's it's as as it gets away from the trunk of the tree it becomes almost more uh precise repetitive patterning that's beautiful so many applications for this and uh you know now that we can start designing art not that we couldn't do it before but now we can we can design art around um, our font choices, you know, layout, it's going to just take a huge jump forward. That beautiful stuff. All right. So that is ornamental script. All right. Thank you for exploring this subject of using fonts as art forms in mid journey or art styles. Um, well, it's amazing how Midjourney is interpreting this stuff. And I love that, uh, you know, we're trying stuff that's out of the box. We're thinking out of the box and, and creating these beautiful styles and, and ideas. Uh, if you could do me a favor and like this video, it really helps, you know, YouTube, I feel kind of ignores me sometimes. Um, like the video, comment below, tell me which art styles or which font, tell me what fonts I should try. You know, maybe next time I'll try something a little bit more angular, like a Futura or a, a Myriad. You know, um, 
something more uh, mechanical, you know, that is very uh, easy and, and uh, legible. Maybe that's my next round. Um, and if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be great. I'm putting out a lot of cool content. People seem to really like it, and I love doing it. All right, till next time.